Flexibility, and guys, we saw some beautiful uh, things on flexibility. And uh, I asked my class this, and maybe we can close up flexibility by saying, "Who do you think of all sports? Anything? What position, player, person? What is the most demanding sports for flexibility or position or player?" I'm still going gymnast. I'm still going gymnast. I mean, I had. Uh, my class and I talked about it, about uh, the flexibility, how actually flexible you need to be to be a really good Olympic gymnast, and that's what we thought. Absolutely, I agree with, uh, with that. You need flexibility, what about you, Mr. M? What about the Kung Fu? <laughs> <laughs> I agree, we saw some of that too. I think there's so many realms of fitness out there that we don't realize as fitness. We saw some. For the divers, you know, when the divers jump off the high diver, they get in the pike and their nose is at oh, their yeah, shins, yeah. tucked up. That's possible. Um, we see the goalies in hockey, they're in the full split, post to post. They got the blockers passing there, <laughs> catching in, all that stuff. I think uh, one of the, if we're going on only on flexibility, one of the things that we saw that was remarkable was the world record for the limbo. The limbo. Oh, ah. Now, this girl from Trinidad went under. It's one foot off the ground. Only your feet can touch the ground. She went underneath, and for the record, you know they do normally one. She went to see how far she goes. She went under about five of them. It was about three meters and ten centimeters. So it was about you know eleven feet or something like that. She went all the way under, one foot off the ground, completely folded over. Do you know what the limbo is? Do, do the kids know what a limbo is? Have they ever done the limbo? Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. <laughs> You take a pole, you put it across, and then you have to go under that pole like Mr. Schumann is doing right I'm now. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> She's remarkable. Forget about it. Yeah. So, anyhow, all that is to say, flexibility is a part of all of our functions. Remember, I know we're sitting down here right now, but sitting down is probably the worst thing that can happen to our flexibility as humans. For a number of reasons, a myriad of reasons, as they would say, the biggest thing to remember is, right now we're sitting all the weights on my butt instead of on my feet like it would be if I were in a squat. Now, that changes the alignment of everything. Watch those other videos if you don't remember it. But hip flexors. Hip flexors, erector spinae, all that stuff. Now, where we're going now is to the world of muscular. Endurance, muscular endurance. Now, a couple of things that are associated with our muscles, strength, power, endurance, flexibility, all involve the muscle somehow, some sort of way, but they're all vastly different. Strength and power are two different things and we'll learn about that next week. But suffice it to say, we understand the correlation of what being strong is. We have an understanding at least what being strong is, but we understand Muscular endurance, I'm not sure that we do. Muscular endurance comes in a plethora of different measurements, but it is essentially, very simply, the ability of your muscles to repeat a certain task over and over and over again for extended periods of times or extended amount of reps. So, for instance, one thing that I can use you as a, use as a example for you, if I were to lay down on a bench press, all right, remember the bench press works what muscles? Do you remember still? I hope so. Pectoralis majors, all right? If I'm benching, imagine me laying down on the bench and I'm pushing the bench, all right? I might be able to push two, three, four hundred pounds 
one time. That is strength. That's maximal force generation. All right. How we test endurance, specifically for the pectoralis major, I can either do it with the, with the bar or I can just do push ups. Just get down in the push up position. Do, there's one. All right. How many can you do in one minute? And that's going to test how much endurance my pectoralis major has. Everything has a certain amount of a cutoff, and you can improve your endurance by specifically being mindful of it and practicing of it. But endurance is something that is based upon the muscle's natural ability. You can train part of it too, but everyone is different. One thing that will really significantly limit your muscular endurance is your body's ability to get rid of lactic acid. Lactic acid is the waste product of your cells and your muscles generating force. And that is what provides the burn when you are doing whatever you are doing. So, for instance, if we are running the mile, some of you guys have very good vascular fitness. You don't have problems running out of your breath, but your legs are on fire by the time you get to round number two. Some people naturally have the ability to dissipate the lactic acid better than others. Matter of fact, probably the best at it was Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer. They did a scientific study because he was winning so many medals and they did a test that monitored his lactic acid. And he was able, even after hundreds of yards of swimming and performance, to keep his lactic acid levels from rising, which meant he could, of course, perform near his peak for a lot longer. He could endure that for a lot longer. So that is one thing to remember. Your lactic acid is what you feel when your muscles are burning, but it is different for everyone as far as how it dissipates genetically, but there's potentials. So what that means is you can always improve that, but genetically you may not be able to improve to the level of Michael Phelps because he's a special athlete. But if you run from here hundred yards and your legs are burning now, well, yeah, you probably will have that for a while, but the more you work on it, the more acclimated your body will become to uh, dealing with the lactic acid, etc. Now remember your muscles, Functioning are a facet of two things, and they're fueled by one of two things, all right? Going back a couple weeks, maybe two weeks ago, we got aerobic exercise and anaerobic exercise. Now, what is aerobic exercise? Matter of fact, type in the chat right now, what is the definition of aerobic exercise? Give you 10 seconds. <laughs> that was Jeopardy boy. <laughs> oh yeah, what is aerobic exercise? It's exercise that, remember aero? It's fueled by what's in the air and what is in the air that we breathe. Oxygen. So, oxygen-based work, which means you can breathe, the oxygen levels are keeping up in your air, or in your muscles, everything's going accordingly. And then there's anaerobic exercise. That means the glycogen in your muscles is generating the force, all right, ATPs, and then the waste product of all that stuff getting burnt is your lactic acid. So, big difference, big difference. Now, we do a couple of things when we do uh, endurance challenges for our fitness. We do the push-up test in our fitness, seventh grade fitness, and for you eighth graders that missed it last year, the push-up test. How many push-ups can you do in one go? And we have the push-up counter where you put underneath, it's about three to four inches off the ground, put your hands on either side, you lower it, your chest hits the thing, deep, and then push up again. That's one thing. What else have we got, Mr. Mitchell, that does the fitness, or the endurance and the fitness tests that we do? Well, let's see, would we consider the mile run a endurance? Well, that's endurance, that's cardiovascular endurance, and I guess it would be some muscular endurance, because if you don't have the muscle to move, mm -hmm. you can get the uh, the burn and the, the strain in your legs too, 
from the muscular endurance. And now, if you're an athlete that's been working hard and squatting, kind of like some guy you may know, all right, if you got a lot of muscle on your lower legs and you're really fast in the sprint, well, it's hard to move that a long way because there's a lot of muscle down there. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's hard to move it. So absolutely, we got the pull-ups, all right? Pull-ups, strength versus endurance. Now, Mr. Shoemaker, at his prime peak, at his prime peak, I could do a pull-up with, I got a weight belt. I would put 90 pounds off me and I could do a set of pull-ups. Now, that's a little different than taking your body weight and just grabbing the bar and seeing how many you can do in one pop. All right, some of us in our fitness pull-up challenges uh, last year, we didn't get to do it the second time around. So I don't know who would have won the second time around. But usually, usually, again, we're back to this again. At your age, for some reason, whatever the reason may be, the girls, the young ladies, there's always one or two young ladies who is either a gymnast or is a, a, just a, a really spry, strong person that knocks it out of the water. I girl think power. Girl, girl power, power, that's right. There you go. Kiana Shaw, uh, her sister goes here now, but Kiana Shaw uh, graduated last year, I believe. I had her two years ago. She did 19 pull-ups, and uh, I think the most I ever had was Claire McCullough. She graduated four years ago from Bret Hart. She's at Leland now, and Claire did, I think, 34 pull-ups, and she just stopped because she was just way there. She could have gone, I think. I was trying to push it, but she kept going. Now, let me tell you a little anecdote. When Mr. Shoemaker was at Bret Hart, me and my good friend Jacob Castro were in Mr. Janice's PE class, and we were doing our pull-up test. And he did 17, and I did 17, and we figured no one's gonna beat that. 17, we, we were blowing the boys out of the water. And Lindsey Dong came out of nowhere. Four foot nine, about 60 pounds. And she did about 27. And boy, we were heartbroken. But what can you say? That's an endurance. How many times can you repeat a muscular action? Any action you can do can be done for endurance. In my class specifically, we do squats. We built from five. And I gotta tell you, I'm really proud of my class specifically, all you guys, but my class specifically. We started at five. And we do this on purpose because every day we push, all right? We do a little sasoy. Small incremental steps of improvement. <laughs> now, what that means is we started at five and then we add five each week. So we did five the first week of school. Everyone thought this is easy. And then we got five, ten. Okay, all right, all right. Then you got 15. Got 20. When we got to 25, people say, 25? You can't, you, you, 25? You can't do 25. What? What? We are 85 now, people. 85 squats. And they do, now they don't do it with a smile on their face, even though they should. <laughs> but they do it. They They're able to do it because they built up slowly but surely, and that's how we build our muscular endurance. Now I have to give a special shout out to my six period Leo Maid and uh, Quasti and Cuts and some other people. Maybe about three to four weeks ago, they said we want to do a squat challenge. Who can do the most squats? And I figured, okay, they'll do you know, a minute or two extra worth of squats, and then they'll burn out, because you know, it's tiring, it is. Well, they did their 85, they kept going, and I promise you, on everything that I love, that they went an extra 15 to 17 minutes consistently doing squats. I finally had to say, guys, I didn't think you would go this long, you're all champions in my own heart. I had a meeting I had to get to, I had to stop them. But I promise you, we will get more in, we will get more in. But that's what I'm talking about, the endurance. You can build the endurance there one step at a time. Next video, we'll learn a little bit about how to actually perform these things with endurance and pacing and things like that. But right now, understand, endurance is how many times you can do any exercise that you can name, that you can think of, and how many times that you can perform that exercise for Total amount, not for weight or not for one shot, all right? But total amount. And certain things lend themselves to endurance, and we'll learn more about that next video. Certain things lend themselves more to endurance, like for instance, 
a power lifter who wants to just lift the heaviest thing one time is not going to have as much endurance as someone who say is a uh, long-term uh, iron man runner like miss cott miss cott is phenomenal endurance there she swims what is it uh one mile and then you you, you bike five miles and then you run 10 miles something like that but that's phenomenal endurance and we'll be sure to give you some examples of that in the very next video mr morton Hinwick. Talking about muscle endurance, guys, repetitive muscle movement is going to build endurance. Just as Mr. Shoemaker shared his class up to 85 squats, that's pretty impressive, Mr. Mitchell. It is impressive. 85, 85 is a lot. In a row. It's a lot. It's not sets of, you know, 15, 20, adding up to 85. That's in a row. I'm wondering if my class could do it. Either. I'm wondering, too. That would be fun to check out. Absolutely. That's a lot of squats. Get ready, my class. Oh, yeah. A lot of squats in a row. But... Notice, Mr. Shoemaker didn't say they started with 85. They built up from 5 to 85. Yep. And it took some time. Practice. Practice. So there's other ways you can talk about endurance in life. Not only muscular endurance, but there's psychological endurance. There is physical endurance we've been talking about. There's emotional endurance. So here's the question, guys. Right. And I'm going to go first this time. But here's the question. What is something in our lives that we've had to either physically, emotionally, or psychologically endure? I've shared this in my class. I'm not sure if I shared this in another video, but let's get deep real quick. My best friend when I was 21 committed suicide. I was 21, he was 21. And I just remember the emotional anguish from seeing him one day to not seeing him. And when Mr. Shoemaker was sharing about that muscular endurance from 5 to 85, I guarantee you, you Mr. Shoemaker students, you think about the pain you go through, the physical pain, but you know what? You know you can do it. I started at a 5-2 dealing with my friend's death. It was very difficult, but time helps. That doesn't bring them back, but boy, that emotional anguish, that emotional pain built in me endurance. And so now it's been, that was 1989, I'm not good with math, but 32 years, 33 years, something like that. I think around there. Someone do the math out there, 1989 to 2021. But it's been years. So I've learned how to be emotionally endurance, if you will. My emotional state has gotten stronger. I've learned how to deal with that pain. So that's something I would share with you guys, something I... It's still a struggle at times, but not nearly what it was when I began this difficult process. Mr. Mitchell, what about you? What comes to your mind? All right. Well, besides working with you for 25 years, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of That's endurance. a joke, guys. He doesn't mean it. Or, or do you? Well, you know. Let's talk later. Yeah, hey, we'll, 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 we'll talk about later. But what I'm thinking is when I was basically your guy's age. And uh, I was a Boy Scout. And as a Boy Scout, everything you did, you tried to get merit badges, and you got merit badges, and more merit badges meant you went up to, you were a star, you were life, and finally you shot to be an Eagle Scout, which was the pinnacle of a Boy Scout. And one of the merit badges that I went for was swimming. And the swimming merit badge was yours if you could swim one mile. Mm. And let me tell you something. Swimming one mile? No joke. That ain't no joke. Long That's time. a long distance. You want to talk about endurance and wanting to quit? Like half a mile, I'm sitting there, no, I can't do this. And then I kept just, just gritting and, and enduring and fighting. And finally... I made it. I made my mile. Got my merit badge. That's so I'm gonna say. And that was so long ago, and I still remember that. You That's know? the key. He still remembers it. Yeah, 50 years later. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So what you're experiencing now, guys, whatever your struggle is, if you come through it on the other side, you're gonna be his age, my age, Mr. She makes it, and that's gonna benefit you as an adult. It's gonna benefit you. Mr. Shoemaker. Well, you know. Thinking about that question, there's a lot of different ways I can go with that. I mean, I've had some similar endurances with both of you guys. 
I, I got to just be honest with you guys right now, just to kind of tie it into the right now. It's been an endurance run teaching online in the method that we're doing. I mean, we love doing the shoot times. We love having you. But here's the real deal. You guys don't understand the energy that I really get from coming out first period, and you got an energetic first period, and hey guys, I'm, yeah, we're going to do this, boom. And I really, you know, I'm the same guy in person that I met on video. We're not acting different because we're in front of a camera. I love having you guys in person. I love interacting with you guys. That's why I enjoy teaching. It teaches you guys how to be fit and how to be strong. And it's been a challenge. I've been sitting down like this for eight, nine months. And, you know, let me tell you, that I, I've sat more, as we said last time, I sat more in the last eight, nine months than I've sat in the last probably literally 15, 16, 17 years. And it's just not the same without you guys being here. Some of you guys are coming back to 22nd. Not many of you, but mm -hmm. for you guys that come back, our goal is to get you fit in shape but have a lot of fun doing it because I think right now the world's in a crazy place and you know I endure that and we're gonna get back in and have some fun and bring some some zip back to our life. Absolutely lights at the end of the tunnel I can see that light. There it is. There you go. There you go. Hey guys why did the vegetarians stop running on the cross country team? Why? Why? Well they didn't like the meats. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, I see what he did. No, my God. All right, I have my guys. vegetarians in my class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. How many vegetarians do we have out there? That'd be an interesting question to, to ask. I wonder how many students out there are vegetarians and how long have you been a vegetarian? Mm -hmm. Here's a principle for you guys to consider before I let you go. The word sacrifice. The word sacrifice means to give up something of importance for something of greater importance. And so, for example... In your lives right now, you might give up something of importance, like checking your social media, and instead go study for a test. Checking your social media, yeah, kind of important, but studying for a test, more important. Another example, maybe for a time give up playing video games, so you can, I know, that would be tough, <laughs> give up playing video games for a certain time and go take the trash out or help cook dinner or help clean up after dinner. So, sacrifice. Give up something of importance for something of greater importance. Take out the trash. Help cook dinner. It reminds me of a song. Guys. Take out the papers and the trash. Or you don't get no stinking cash. Well, I know what we're doing here, but before we do what we're doing here, I'm going to ask the sports factor to tell us what you got for us today in the trivia. All right. You want to talk about endurance. For me, it's the Tour de France. Ooh, baby. And if you don't know what the Tour de France is, kids, this is 21 straight grueling days of men on spicicles going over mountains and all the way through everywhere in the country of France. 21 days. So my question is, who was, and I'm saying was, the all-time winner of Tour de France? But ended up being disqualified. Mm, yep. Disqualified. Great question. Jolly geographer. Well, the jolly geographer wants you to know that Moscow is indeed the capital of Russia. Some of you guys got that. Most of you got that. Some of you did not. But my question is, we're in France for the France. Tour de France. And what is the name of the famous mountains in France. Good that, question. Oh, that they climb up. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Now, it's got to be grueling. It's it is grueling. grueling. It's so grueling that it makes me want to go back to uh, take out the papers and the trash.
keep on pushing every day. Try to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. And